Microsoft and 343 Industries have done it. They released Halo early, kind of. During the 20th anniversary Xbox live stream today, well, the day before, as you're probably watching this, Xbox showed a lot of cool stuff and we got some Halo news, including a teaser for the upcoming Halo TV show that will be on Paramount Plus, apparently, as well as an announcement that the Halo Infinite multiplayer, which is technically a beta until the official release date of December 8th, is ready to go and playable for free on Xbox and PC via Game Pass or Steam which is really cool. There were some quirks with the initial launcher that was giving people blue screens on both their Xbox and PC, which was pretty wild, but that has mostly been fixed. So just restart your system and start the download all over again. It feels solid. It looks absolutely beautiful, but how does it stream? Before we go too far, I did want to let you know that for backing track, our stream safe, video safe, royalty free rock and metal music, we do have a Halo album coming. We were trying to keep this a secret up to <laughs> the official release date, but since they're dropping it early, I'm teasing it early. We have an album called Forerunner, which is of course going to be Halo themed and inspired. And some of the background music is being used in this video. It's not done yet. It will be released hopefully in time for the full release of Halo Infinite. But I am super stoked for that, and if you're looking for more music in the meantime, we did just drop Versus 2, the sequel to my favorite backing track album so far this past week, so you can check it out at the links below. Let's jump into some game performance details first. So first and foremost, I feel like the game runs better than, the, than it did during the flight, but still nowhere near as good as I'd like. The game seems to run like butt, at least on NVIDIA. Uh, I'm using, for my specific build, I'm using an RTX 3090 and a 10900K, and during the flights, I tested on an RTX 3080 as well. It is tough for me to get a solid frame rate at 1440p on the higher graphical settings. Uh, I have seen reports that it's running great on AMD GPUs, so your mileage may vary there. Uh, the game itself is very GPU heavy, not so CPU heavy, which is advantageous for streaming, as we'll talk about in a moment. In terms of optimizing your in-game settings, because it's gonna be so hard to hit your target frame rates, uh, I would definitely recommend messing with the frame rate limiter to set the minimum of 60 and the maximum to some multiple of 60 and not just running completely uncapped or targeting a higher refresh rate. 120 is probably going to be your best bet at higher resolutions for now. And if you're streaming, you may even want to lower it lower than that. And streaming, I would recommend depending, depending on your GPU running high or even medium settings instead of ultra, of course. Uh, we do have a graphic setting that made a big difference in performance for me, which we'll talk about in a moment. But do keep in mind when you're lowering graphic settings, while of course it does make the game look less pleasing to you, the lower detail, the lower resolution textures, the simpler textures, the less graphics effects on screen does actually compress better for your stream. So that's worth keeping in mind. Some settings to play with to try to impact your performance, ambient occlusion, anti-aliasing, reflections, lighting, and shadow quality are all things you can tweak and tone down on their own without affecting the overall image quality, and they can make a small difference. I still feel like the game is not super optimized at the moment. I don't know that it will make a huge difference for you. You may have to lower the render resolution scale, and that is something that I think made a huge difference for me because tweaking all of these settings, like I was able to claim back like one or two FPS on average because it still flickers back and forth. Running at 1440p on high on my 3090, I was averaging 120-ish FPS, but it was flickering between like 110, 115, and 120. Kind of the 117 to 120 range was what was happening quite a bit. However, dropping down to even just 90% resolution scale for the render resolution, which is still 90% of 1440p, pretty much not noticeable unless you're deliberately A-B testing your pixel peeping, seems to get me a locked 120 FPS, at least on the smaller 4v4 modes, and seems to have improved my performance greatly on the big team battle modes. So that's worth keeping in mind. And then I do recommend checking the limit defocused frame rate to improve your alt tabbing or switching between uh, OBS and your game and things like that when you're streaming. It'll make a huge difference for those render lag spikes when you're doing that. Getting into capture and streaming talk, I did want to note that this game, Halo Infinite, does not have a full screen mode. This was something that was a thing in the flights and drove me nuts and I had just assumed was a quirk of the flights and that they would add it back in. But here we are still in beta, but you know, with a proper release and there is still no full screen mode. You have borderless full screen or windowed. This causes some issues for how you, the, the, the game renders on your screen, shadow plays, frame rate counter doesn't work and you have to enable desktop capture mode for shadow play which may mean if you're on a multi-monitor setup that is capturing your second monitor instead of your game because Shadowplay likes to derp up with that. Thankfully, the game capture source in OBS Studio still works fine with this game, so that's pretty awesome there. Do prepare for a frame rate impact on your gameplay, 
when you open OBS and start streaming with it. I was running, again, an average of 120-ish FPS without OBS, and depending on the settings I was using with OBS open, I was going anywhere from 80 to 100 FPS on average instead of that 120. So you will be taking that hit there unless you would want to drop all the way down to 60, and you're just going to have to deal with it. I ran my stream test with OBS version 27.1.3 and streamed at 1080p 60 at 8 megabits per second. I'm using Windows 11 and the latest NVIDIA game ready drivers. CPU encoding, because this game is very GPU heavy and not super CPU heavy at all, CPU coding was actually a breeze. And on my CPU, obviously you got to scale it down based on yours, but on my CPU, CPU encoding was perfectly fine up to medium. Slow is not suitable for real time, doesn't work in real time don't try it. This is a good thing for AMD users because if the game runs better on AMD GPUs, then you're better off than the rest of us other than the fact that AMD's video encoder really sucks for streaming, so you can still use CPU encoding and probably be fine. GPU encoding is fine as well and gets you a little bit higher in-game frame rates, but it will vary depending on your card and how stressed your particular card is as we kind of scale down to the 3060s, the 2050, or not 2060s, and 1050 Ti's as a lot of you all have noted that at least in the flights, the performance wasn't great already, so you will have to scale this a little bit accordingly, but I do recommend trying CPU encoding first as you're gonna get the least impact on your overall GPU usage. However, like I said, I did get higher frame rates encoding with NVENC, even if there were some little quirks to it. I will say those of you who have been on a long running Windows 10 installation will probably still need to run OBS as administrator to help fight render lag, uh, competing with the game because it is that GPU heavy, thankfully, even at the high settings, like it's not using a ton of VRAM. So if you have a higher VRAM count card, you're a little bit advantageous there in terms of media decoding and things like that. Uh, however, if you're running Windows 11, you probably don't need to run OBS as administrator as the default HAGS or Hardware Accelerated Graphics Scheduler, I think is the shortcut, handles effectively what running OBS as admin does. And on Windows 11, it seems to perform a lot better than it did on Windows 10 for me, even with an updated version of Windows 10. But your mileage may vary, vary. definitely do some tests first and see which one is the way to go for you. In terms of game performance based on streaming, I was averaging, again, 115 to 120 FPS without OBS open. When encoding with X264, uh, I was holding about 90 to 99 FPS, so a, a fairly significant hit. However, I did not suffer any, again, I'm on a higher end CPU, so it will scale based on your performance, but because it's so GPU heavy versus CPU heavy, the difference between X264 fast, medium, and faster, there was no significant, like, difference in performance impact on my game between those encoder settings so i was still holding 90 to 99 regardless of whether i was on fast or fast or medium which is kind of nice nvink however performs a little bit more smoothly here at least on 20 and 30 series cards holding an average of 100 to 110 fps depending on your settings of course now this was all specifically with just capturing the game capture which is not super representative of someone who's streaming mainly just recording if you are streaming uh, loading up a layout and things like that it's still mostly fine, however, you do take a higher performance hit to your actual game performance, dropping me down to about 80 or 90 FPS, setting up my Epos OS version of the Nerd or Die Stream OS layout, uh, and that's with both NVENC and X264, uh, so worth keeping in mind, but also keep in mind that this is a first-person shooter. It's a fast-paced game. Fluidity of your frame rate is going to matter most to viewers versus image quality on your you know, still images or whatever. However, consider simpler scene layouts and fewer graphics on screen with this kind of game if you want to improve your overall quality as the more you have on screen, the more the compressor struggles to compress everything and the worse your game will look. But again, fluidity is most important. You know what else is important? Our sponsor and paying the bills so I can continue to make these videos for you. Fox and sharing my cooking experiments and progress with you all all year on Discord and Twitter, showing my grill adventures and fancy meals my wife and I have been making inside. While I'm not starting a cooking channel anytime soon, despite the requests, it has been fun. But can I be real with you for a sec? I love cooking and learning to cook and making something delicious that really gives you that feeling of just mm, when you're done. But I actually hate what comes before planning and prepping for meals. As a new dad, time is slim nights are hectic and I, I i rarely feel like i have the time to just sit down and actually plan out or prepare for the meals that i want to make during the week and even when i do i may not be in the headspace for it hellofresh helps eliminate those stressors while still allowing us to feel like we're eating like royalty which is pretty nice hellofresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week including vegetarian calorie smart and gourmet options providing plenty of variety 
The weekly delivery helps you cut back on prep time, time and the cleanup afterwards, and even has a wide variety of 20 minutes meals for those who really need to move fast. You know, the no time to cook, I have a, a, a meeting in like half an hour kind of people. The prepackaged ingredients means that most of the hard part is done for you, with you just doing a little chopping, a little cooking, and a lot of eating. Plus, you get things pre-portioned, so no more making meals for 10 when you mean to make a meal for two. My wife and I really enjoyed trying new things with some of these and discovering new meals that we'll probably make regularly now, and you get to keep the recipes. If you're struggling to cook your way through the holidays, head on over to HelloFresh.com and use code EPOSFOX14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. It's worth it. Even as a picky eater, I wasn't really sure about trying this kind of thing, but the recipes even call for situations where you could not include specific ingredients if you don't prefer them, and you get to pick the kind of meals you want in the first place. Again, that's HelloFresh.com and code EPOSVOX14 for up to 14 free meals plus three free gifts. Epi eating. And of course, if you're streaming this from the Xbox, then you mostly get to continue as normal. Hook your Xbox up to your capture card and run as normal. Again, the same issues of it being a first-person shooter if you're not used to streaming those for some reason, then will still apply, but otherwise, you're mostly good to go. It's You, you don't have performance concerns from any game to game or what have you, so pretty nice there. Uh, I do like that you get full, you get field of view tweaking, it has ultra wide support, all that jazz. So, gonna be a pretty awesome season for games. Really stinks for Battlefield that it launched literally like right as Battlefield was dropping and having server issues. I think that's going to be a very interesting dynamic there. I'm stoked that we get access to it early and that they felt so confident in like releasing it in this state versus, you know, needing to continue patching it up. And I am super stoked to see what the campaign has in store for us come December 8th. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. New Halo is always just like a field day for me. I am super stoked. I'm going to be grinding this out, even though I do need to make videos for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Let me know what your experiences are over on our Discord server, discord.gg slash Hit the like button and remember, be kind, rewind.